So welcome. I'm here with uh, Bruno Fernandez Ruiz. He's an architect, fellow, and vice president at Yahoo, and he's been bringing Mojito out to the world. Um, we're uh, here to talk about how Mojito uh, hopefully solves a lot of problems for developers, uh, JavaScript, and web folk. Um, so I guess you know, let's start with kind of the basic, the basic setting. Uh, what problem does Mojito solve for developers? Well, thank you, Simon, for having us here. Um, so um, Mojito essentially makes, I think, a couple of things really easy. One is today when you develop an application that runs on a client, you develop some JavaScript as a web app, and in some cases you run on a slow connection, mm -hmm. and it happens to be that the, the browser doesn't get a chance to download the JavaScript, which usually is at the end of the page because it can be blocking. So what ends up happening is that as a user, you get a page and you cannot click on it. And you get infuriated that there is a form and you keep submitting and nothing happens, or you click on the links and nothing happens. And in some extreme cases, some people have done a fully an Ajax page, uh, what happens is that you don't actually see anything. And for 20 seconds, you know, you're in your phone, you're in a tablet, you're in a 3G connection, and you don't see anything. Uh, so what we're trying to say is that there should always be something to show. And for developers, you should not be more effort to do progressive enhancement, which is, you know, it's the technical term for making sure this happens is right. progressive enhancement. And normally what people used to do years ago is you wrote a version in PHP or in Ruby or in Python on the server side, give a nice page that is usable, and then start adding JavaScript on top to make it better. Mm -hmm. Now, the reality is developers have tight deadlines and... <laughs> different tools and you know we take shortcuts so at the end of the day what ends up happening is that you develop things on the client side and you don't have the the, the fallback option or the the basic version on the server side so with mojito we make it straightforward you develop your code and you can decide your code runs on the client you decide if that code is only server side you decide that code is common and share across the board and then that allows a number of other things right is is that you were mentioning it's um, once I'm partially connected, I can. It makes it easier to run within a phone, mm -hmm. and it's one thing we've seen with things like a, uh, um, uh, an Adobe's uh, phone gap. Yeah. Got, got bought by by Adobe, and actually it's an Apache incubator project. Uh, so it's that notion of the browser loses the Chrome. Yes. And what we used to see as the little UI around it. You know, what you have now is this not what we call it a Chromeless web runtime. It's like a Chromeless browser. <clears throat> So in that world, the notion of disconnected, partially connected, it's, it's even more relevant. And what Mojito helps is you can create applications and then embed those applications in those runtimes. And the reason it helps is because it has a very the same way that it manages to shift code from the client and server, it manages to do what we call a multidimensional configuration. So it's an iPhone, it's an iPad, right. it's a first generation, it's a second generation. Am I on a slow network? Am I on a fast network? And all these things get exposed to the application and are very easy for developers to develop then for that Chromeless web, web, web runtime. Okay, so it's both for kind of the traditional web where you're looking at it through a browser with Chrome and for places like PhoneGap where you've wrapped it up and you the user probably thinks of it as an application. Yeah, as an example, Livestand um, mm -hmm. or, you know, which is one of the, through the App Store, so when you install Lifestand, Lifestand is fully an HTML5 application with a lot of CSS3 behind the scenes. Um, but that's packaged to our own equivalent of PhoneGap. It's not really PhoneGap, but you know we have the equivalent technology of PhoneGap, right. and we wrap it. Um, but to give you an idea, our developers use a desktop to develop. Right. They package it and then put it on the App Store. And the same code in sometimes, you know, we could wrap it as an Android. It's more of a business decision of when Android is ready to enter the market rather than the technology being ready. Right. And we can also decide that some of the code runs very slow and, you know, because it's fetching a lot of images or data behind the scenes, so, and you're in a slow connection. So what we do is, well, you're in a slow connection, it's a lot of data, let's run this code on the server side, fetch all those assets, and then bring you the, the end so it gives a lot of flexibility between devices, devices on the server. At the end of the day, what he's trying to say is all these things used to be considered separate things. Right. Whether you were a web browser, you were a server, you were a, an app. And the whole idea is with the right abstraction through this framework, everything basically becomes the single programming environment. 
Okay. Well, let, let's step back just a little bit to the developer themselves. Um, you know, Mojito is definitely all about JavaScript and HTML5. Um, but, but how much background do you have to have to start using Mojito? Do you have to be a JavaScript guru? No. So the, the basic Hello World in Mojito, I, I wouldn't think is hotter than the, the Hello World in Ruby and Rails, to give yeah. an analogy of, that people can map onto. Um, you know, there's plenty of documentation to go, to, to go through it with getting started guides. Um, I think the difference becomes that YUI is a very solid and mature technology that allows people to package. You know, one of the things YUI does really well is it manages the dependencies and the whole tree of modules. So you only really download and install the very minimum that your application needs. And that might be a dynamic decision. I happen to be looking at that application on a mobile phone because I am on a mobile phone and slow connection. We can decide which modules, or you as a developer can dynamically decide which modules you want to assemble. So all of that is a shift for a lot of developers that are used to a global namespace. Uh, they're used to just basically everything shares the same scoping. And YUI you know, introduces namespaces, isolates things into modules, and allows that dynamic module management and dependency management. So that's the part that if you really want to get into it, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to take you a little bit longer to learn. But you know, honestly, I think regardless of Mojito, it's a best practice, right? If you start seeing how the web is starting to change, how modern JavaScript libraries people are coding, how right. ECMAScript 6 is evolving to, the notion of application lexical scoping and modules is basically becoming a first class uh, problem and solution in the next generation of JavaScript. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just at a, a group where we were talking about craft in JavaScript and how it's all shifting with modern JavaScript. Um, there are a lot of practices that nobody would have thought of in 1998, but um, it's been, you know, 15 years of growth and we have to adapt to, to handle that growth. Um, so, if I'm a developer who you know wants to take the plunge, what's the best place to start with Mojito? Best place is GitHub. You know, go to github.com slash yahoo slash mojito. Um, the code is there. The issues are there. There are links to all the documentation and the forums. And you know, we already have I think a couple of dozen um, forks of the code. A couple of pull requests already coming through. Good. So go to GitHub. All the links are there. That's really the, the starting point. Uh, for the whole uh, for the whole solution. Okay, um, Mojito is you know part of a larger package, so you know I, I think of a, a bunch of other Yahoo technologies that that are related. Uh, you mentioned YUI already. There's YQL. Um, the very name Mojito seems to come from the Yahoo cocktails uh, world, um, and then there's and then there's Manhattan. And so I guess, you know, how much Yahoo-specific tooling do, do developers need to use to, to take advantage of Mojito? Is it, you know, do you have to use the whole family? Or obviously you can just use YUI, but, you know, how do these parts fit together? Yeah, so <clears throat> Mojito depends on YUI. So YUI, it's a hard dependency on Mojito right now. Um, you know, nothing stops the community for from from breaking the dependency and getting Mojito running on jQuery or something right. else or Google's closure libraries. Um, that might happen. And that actually I think is a great thing. If, if the community really wants to go that way, you know, we'll definitely be supportive. Uh, it's up to the community to decide. Um, nothing else is required. It's, it's really optional. Um, so Mojito by default assumes that you're not doing object relational mapping, you're not really talking to a database, mm -hmm. because the notion of a database remotely from a tablet to a web service just doesn't make sense. Uh, so we expose YQL, which we think it's you know it's a better way of exposing REST web services and SOAP web services to a client. It's actually fun. Um, yeah. And it is actually <laughs> used, you know, yeah. we, so I'll tell you, it's, it's uh, extremely successful. We're serving over 12 billion API calls per month. Um, you know, there are thousands of open tables in YQL. People are using it. Uh, we increased the, the rate limit recently. Um, so it's, it's a great piece of technology that Mojito makes it very easy to work with. Uh, we also encapsulate the access, you know, through YQL, you could create a simple y.yql module that abstracts whether you're talking remotely through the YQL web service or you're talking remotely 
to the SQL store that exists in the browser, whether that is IndexedDB oh, okay. or that is SQLite. Uh, so it makes it easy. Now, if you don't want to use this, no, nothing forces you. Mojito is very um, modular. It uses mm -hmm. plugins in the architecture, so nothing forces you for your models to access YQL. You could access um, any other web. You could craft your own HTTP calls if so you want to do. We just think that a YQL is much easier for folks to use. Um, other things like Manhattan, which is our hosting environment, um, that's, um, that's a closed for now platform as a service that we are using internally and we just you know made it available to the attendees at JSConf last week yeah well, actually earlier yeah. this week <laughs> seems like it's been a it was a lot of fun so uh, you know time flies um, so we made it available for uh, all the attendees we handed over 400 app IDs for people to use and that's a hosting environment but you can run Mojito in any um, I would say in the end state in any server side JavaScript hosting environment for now, we test and we run in production with Node.js. Yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, I actually personally did run the previous, previous version of Mojito and Rhino, to give an example, that oh, things that okay. people could do. Yeah. So there is no YUI for a long time, which is the dependency and the abstraction to Node.js, uh, has run on many server-side JavaScript platforms and has been run on Rhino for a long time. So nothing would stop people to run in whichever hosting environment they want, which whichever server-side JavaScript environment. We support and we run on Node.js, so that's our preferred choice. Right. But if folks really want to have their own, and you know, they can run on join infrastructure, they can run on Amazon, they can run whatever they want. You're, you're reminding me of some, some early Yahoo demos where uh, with Node and YUI, you were able to move code back and forth from client to server and really make some things work that I didn't think would be possible on some mobile phones that weren't very capable. Um, is that sort of where this comes from? I mean, I, I think Node is opening up new possibilities on the server side for JavaScript. I don't know that that many people outside of Mojito are yet, you know, shifting code back and forth at will. Uh, you seem to have taken something that was an incredibly cool demo and, uh, you know, made it more accessible to a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, that that's exactly right. I mean, there were a number of, there were really three factors that, uh, pushed us towards cocktails and mojito. One of them was definitely uh, seeing YUI 3, uh, and I think the demo that I, at least I saw, and I'm sure there have been others from Dave Glass showing the calendar widget moving back and forth yeah. between the client and the server. Um, I think he was using the Jazz DOM on the server side, and actually really cool, uh, you know, mind-bending trick that <laughs> yes. really challenges, it challenges your assumptions. So that was definitely one thing that paid um, played a strong role. The, the second one is on the on our mail systems. We were trying with Node for things like file upload. Oh, okay. And we started seeing a lot of promise in Node. You know that was back to the 0.1 days. Uh, we had um, you know a um, couple of really good people working on it, like Peter Gris, um, who was really hacking on the kernel and hacking on Node.js. And we said, well, that's very promising. And the third one was. You know, basically, a strategically, a desire to move to that Chromeless web runtime, and then thinking, well, how do we develop applications, web apps for the Chromeless web runtime? How do we distribute code? And what are the characteristics of mobile? And you know, the other two things, with what we had seen on YUI three and what we, what we were seeing on Mail, so like, those fit really well. And that's, you know, the sentence that I had is that I, I don't see the tablet and my laptop and my server as different things anymore. I see them as the code basically should have that ability to basically flow eventually between them to the point that, and this doesn't happen today, but it's kind of a vision, Right. is if I have, you know, my laptop next to me and I'm on my phone, but my phone basically doesn't have some feature, some functionality, I'm low on battery or low on connectivity, and I'm next to my laptop who is wired, why can I not shift some computation right. or processing onto my laptop and then render it on the UI on my on my device? Wow. Or the same with the car, right? So that whole thing is is really the the third pillar into why we went in that direction. And it's, it was just that's what we call it cocktails, right? We brought a lot yeah. of stuff together. It wasn't there's nothing individually that I would say like, oh wow, you know, it's something came out of the blue is really, okay, there was no jazz, there was YUI 3, there was a demo, there was the file upload, we saw the streaming, 
It was a lot of things happened together, put in and just delivered it. Great, great. Well, it's good to see Yahoo keep pushing on JavaScript and uh, take it new places, I'd almost say new dimensions with this one. Um, and, you know, I wish you luck with, with more of this, and I'm hoping a lot of developers will take it out for a ride. Thank you, Simon. I hope the same. I hope that, you know, Mojito becomes a healthy and well-received uh, open source uh, project and the folks will find it interesting and join it. Great. Thank you for having us um, here. Thank you.